there's going to come a time where we won't have to talk about the pandemic anymore. Amen. Maybe that time's not right now, but that time is coming. So it's good to see that folks are getting the, the vaccines. It's good to see the effectiveness of the vaccines. It's good to see that uh, less folks are going to the hospital. It's good to see that less folks are on ventilators. It's good to see that less folks are dying. I thank God for that. But again, during these last 15 months, uh, I believe we've all changed. And I pray that you've used this time to change in a positive uh, manner. But this virus has affected many of us in a negative uh, manner. M maybe you're running on empty right now. Maybe you feel as though you've had all you can take. Um, maybe, you know, you, you see that light at the end of the tunnel and you've been waiting for that light at the end of the tunnel. But maybe right now, because of where you're at emotionally and spiritually, you believe that light at the end of the tunnel is a train coming at you. Um, some of us have been affected emotionally and, and some spiritually and some uh, employment. Some our finances have been negatively affected. Some our relationships. Some of our futures don't look as bright as they used to because of some of the things that happened. Some of us feel as though we're at the end of our rope. Maybe you feel that way. In our prickery of scripture today, we find this woman. She's an unnamed woman. Um, her husband's unnamed. Her children are unnamed. Um, her husband has, has died suddenly. And he has left, left her with a, a whole lot of debt. Amen. Um, she is now hurting. Her situation is critical. What do you do when you are hurting? What do you do when your situation is, is critical? Do you pick up the phone and call Pastor Scott? <laughs> I should not be your first call. <laughs> do you call your prayer partner? That should not be your first call. We should call on the Lord. We should call on the name of the Lord. So I encourage our folks to call on God during this time. In this time of pandemic, we should have been calling on God every day. During this time of going out into the workplace, some of our frontline folks had to go to, to their jobs. We should have been calling on the name of the Lord to get you through it. And some of us have, have gotten through it because of being obedient to God, doing what God has told us to do, and listening to God's word. We've asked God to cover us in the blood of Jesus Christ, God. Anoint us to do what we have to do during this time of pandemic. Amen. Um, again, this woman made up her mind that she was going to go to God. And she went to God through God's prophet. She had decided her situation was at a point that she could not do anything about it. So she felt that it was only through God that there was any hope of getting through. And she knew that God could do something. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm often referred to, to Matthew 7 and 7, where it tells you and I that we should ask and it will be given to us to seek and and you will find and to knock, knock, and the door will be open. Again, Matthew 7 and 7. This woman had a mission that was impossible. It took me back to back in the, the late 60s, uh, Peter Graves and Mission Impossible. You remember, and I, I, I remember the theme song, like the most popular song that I started doing. I couldn't get it out of my head the other night, so I'm not even going to do it right now because I'll never forget it. But it gets in your head, you know. And Peter Graves would walk in some uh, nondescript place, and he would some give him a, 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 a record or, or give him a, a, a tape. I mean, when's last all a tape? <laughs> you get a tape, and he would play it, and then it would self-destruct. And, you know, it, it would go through the mission. It would talk about how this, this mission was impossible. It would give a story, and the story just sounded impossible. And then it said, um, the mission, should you accept? <laughs> you know, the mission, if you should accept it. And it would lay it out, and, and this, this is going to be self-destruct in 30 seconds. If you don't touch it, and boom, it smoke up the smoke. So again, he would always accept the mission. They, they didn't have a mission impossible. He didn't accept the mission. So here on this day, this woman had a mission, and it was impossible. And she brings in Elijah the prophet, and he makes it even more impossible. <laughs> he tells her to go and knock on your, your neighbor's doors. You know, the neighbors that we don't like, the ones that don't like us, the ones who, who don't like our car, don't like our kids, don't like nothing, and we don't like them either. They, they, <laughs> they leave and blown our lawns, we throw them back over. Those neighbors, and ask them for something. <laughs> yes, you got any, any bottles in the back I can borrow? Because it sounded impossible. 
to borrow some, some empty jars from these people and then go in your house and close the door and now what? Now when you borrow some empty bottles, some empty jars and take them to your house, I, I assume everyone assumes you got something in there. Maybe you got a steel out back or something like that. <laughs> Brewing some moonshine or something, you're going to pour it in there <laughs> and go sell the moonshine. We don't know, but, but there had to be some discussion. What, what's she doing getting all of these jars for? You know, see the boys got a little red wagon walking around, you know. <laughs> back in the day, them little, <laughs> them little bottles were five cent deposit. Remember them days? Run through the streets, gathering all the bottles, but they went and got these bottles, and the mission seemed to be impossible. But I'm here to tell you that the oil in this, in this story represents blessings. It was a blessing. She was blessed by more oil that became a blessing. But in this story, it was her obedience that demonstrated that she had faith in the Lord God. The Lord doesn't always perform miracles of this kind to help us pay our debt. But God does meet our needs if we trust and obey him. Amen? The story demonstrates that God cares for his faithful people who are obedient to his word and to his people. The story shows that God's provisions are not limited by nothing but our faith or lack thereof. God multiplies what we surrender no matter how insignificant it may seem. All I got except she said, except a, 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 little, a little oil. That's all she got is a little oil. Now, you don't got a little oil, you can't do but so much with it. So the prophet could have said, okay, take your oil. And when you, most days when you use this to cook or to keep your lamp burning, you use this one. He said, reduce that a little bit. If you reduce it by one-tenth, it'll last ten times longer. That's not what he said. He said, go get some empty bottles, some empty glasses, some empty pails. Go get some empty stuff. And she had to be saying, Councilman Anderson, what is this? So I got a little oil. I told him I got a little oil. He told me, go get some empty stuff. Why he tell her to go get some full bottles? <laughs> go borrow some, some, some full bottles of, of oil. That's what he said. Because I believe that there was a test coming. I believe that her faith was about to be tested. And she might not have known what was coming, but she did what he said do. And sometimes God gives us something to do, and we don't do it because we don't see it. Faith is not about what you see. Let's be real. It's not about what you see. It's not about what you studied. It's not about you, what you read. It's about the unseen things. Amen. We allow God to work in our lives. Amen. So God shows this woman that it doesn't matter that you only got that left, that I can use it. So let's consider three points concerning the oil of obedience, this woman being obedient to the word of God. The first point, like you consider it, is we have a problem. Whenever we watch anything about NASA and there's something with the, the lunar rover or, or the moon rover, there's always there's a problem. Houston, there's a problem. This woman had a problem and she took the problem to the one she felt could get an answer from the Lord. She took the prop to Elijah. We find the first two verses of our prickly scripture today, 2 Kings 4, 1 and 2. It says, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elijah, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elijah replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me what you, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of oil, olive oil, she said. This married man with two sons and a, and a wife is now gone. E Elijah knew him, amen? He, he, he knew his character. You see, some folks will, will spend time and they will fixate, fixate on what did he do? Why he spent all his money? Why he didn't know? Elijah didn't fix it on what he did, how he spent his money. He, he might have been a prophet that was helping other prophets. He might have been helping other preachers, other churches, and now he broke. He, he might be like me. Every time somebody asks him something, I give it to him. <laughs> Maybe. 
You made this much. Why you got left? Because I've been giving away for all these years. Maybe he gave all his money away. Now he was in debt. Maybe he thought he was going to live a long life and pay it back, and, and now he's dead. And now it falls on his wife. The debt was hers. The story is not about how it happened, that, but that it happened. And now she's in dire straits, and she needs help. And she has recognized there's nothing within her own power that can be done that will straighten this thing out. Amen. She had a debt with no means to pay the debt. She had a legal system that she was under that did not allow for bankruptcy. Amen. She couldn't buy her way out of it. She was in trouble. If a person in that, that culture could not pay their debt, the Mosaic law, it gave the creditor the right to claim th this person's services and the services of their children until the debt was paid off or until the, the, the year of jubilee when the owners would free their, their slaves. Amen. We find in Leviticus chapter 25, 39 through 41, if any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to you, do not make them work as slaves. They are to be treated as hired workers or temporary residents among you. They are to work for you until the year of Jubilee. Then they and their children are to be released and they will go back to their own clans and to the property of their ancestors. There's a way out of slavery back in that day. Amen. Her only hope here was an appeal to God. And her appeal to God was through Elijah the prophet. The Lord sometimes, family, he brings us to a place where we see our own needs and our own inability to meet our needs. We've been there. Have you been there, family? We must lose faith in ourselves sometimes and build our faith in God who is faithful all the time. Elijah, again, he didn't blow her off. He didn't, he didn't send her away. He didn't say it's too tough of a problem. He didn't tell her, hold on, I'll think about it. Get back to me next week, Shell. That's not what he said. He said, how can I help you? God is asking you that question today. How can I help you? How can I help you get out of the mess you got yourself in? Amen. What do you got in your house? What do you got in your hand that I can use to help you get out of the situation that you find yourself in? It reminds me of, of Mark chapter 10, verse 51. It said, what do you want me to do for you? This is Jesus asked the blind man. The blind man simply said, I want to see. What do you want me to do? He said, what do you want me to do for you? If Christ asked you that, what would you say? I want a million dollars. The man said, I'm blind. I want to deal with my need, not my greed. What do you want me to do? I, I want to see. Hey, 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 man, you can't walk. What do you want? I, 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 want, I want a Rolls Royce. No, I want to walk. We have to take our needs to the Lord, not our greeds to the Lord. Amen. So again, God wants to hear about our needs. The, this woman was in economic. She was in emotional. She was in financial. She was in spiritual crises. In going to Elijah, she was seeking a spiritual solution to her dilemma. She wasn't looking for a banker to help her out. She wasn't looking to, to do a reverse mortgage. She wasn't looking to, to do a home equity loan. She, was in, she needed spiritual help to get out of this situation. She went to the man of God. He wasn't the richest man around. She went to the man of God. He was a spiritual leader. What do you want me to do? And she laid out the impossible mission. He laid out to her what she had to do to get this mission done. Go and borrow as many as you can. Don't just get a few, Lisa. <laughs> get more than a few. Get them jars, and, and I will fill them up. At this point, she didn't know what Elijah was going to do with the jars. He just said, go get them. She didn't question it. She said, Are you, what, what color you want? What, what size you want? Should it be 64 ounces or 67.5 ounces? Should it be a liter or two? What, what do you want? Elijah said, go get some jars. She, she went and got jars. Be obedient to what thus saith the Lord. That's what this woman did. We've all had something, and we all have something that the Lord can use. It may 
seem insignificant to you and to me, but in God's hands, it can be great. There is nothing in our house but a little jar of oil. You know what that means? <laughs> you know she sold the south, the sofa. Holly, <laughs> you know the, the, the dining room table's gone. <laughs> You know, she's, she sold all the utensils. She ain't got a frying pan, says the board. It's gone. She said, all I got in my house is a little oil. She sold everything else to try to pay the debt. And now she comes to this place, all she has is a little oil. Have you ever gotten down to your little bit of oil? Have you gotten to a place where you couldn't sell nothing else, you couldn't give nothing away, people didn't want your old stuff anyway? Have you gotten that place? You, you know, when you get to that point, we got to look to the Lord. Amen. I was, I was reading, well, I rest, heard a sermon the other day, and the pastor said, this is a quote. He said, when you don't have what you really want, you will discover that God is what you really need. And I said, I like that. When you don't have what you really want, you will discover that God is what you really need. Sometimes God gets us so low, <laughs> we can't look no place but the board and butt up. Amen. Sometimes he'll drive us to our knees, and while on our knees, we can't do nothing but pray. Amen. We must be obedient, and then the oil will overflow. I'm always talking about that, that saucer. I go back to my childhood. I go back to my, my mama. My mama drank Maxwell House coffee, instant coffee, and it smelled so good as a kid. And mom would get it going, and she'd hook it up, and I want some too. And me and my brother said, we asked some, and mom would get us a cup. And she would put a little bit of coffee in it. Brother Boyd, about that much coffee? <laughs> about that much cream and water, amen? You know, that carnation cream. We had no milk. You know, it was carnation cream. Remember carnation? <laughs> One part carnation cream and 15 parts water, amen? <laughs> you can see right through it. We put that in there, and then she gets some sugar. You dump sugar in there and the cream, and it's all overflowing. And the coffee was always too hot. So, so you, you, you had to sip on it. But you want to mess with it first because it would overflow and you always had a saucer. You know, back in the day, you had cup and saucer. You didn't just have no cup. You didn't put no cup on mama's table. You had a cup and saucer, amen. You know, we, <laughs> with your finger up and your pinky up like this. You know how we did it, amen. So, <laughs> we, but the best part of that whole thing was what was in the saucer. So, at least it was sweet. It was the perfect temperature. Imagine we, remember sucking on that <laughs> so every time things get tough, I, I remind myself I'm still drinking from the saucer. I'm living in the overflow. God has blessed us so that we're living in the overflow. Amen. I'm not supposed to look as good as I look, brother. <laughs> I'm not supposed to, to have the, the, the health I got. I'm not supposed to have the, 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 the wife I got. I'm not supposed to have the kids I got. Amen. That is overflow. I was supposed to go to a good college, amen. I was supposed to be a good athlete. I was that, but it's an overflow. Everything I got is overflow. I'm living in the overflow, and I thank God for it, amen. Thank you, God, for allowing us to live in the overflow. Drinking from the salsa. Oh, it tastes good, don't it? It takes, tastes good to be at my age doing what I do for the glory of God, Amen. Because I could be, I could be for some of my friends all right, right now. Somebody talked about age yesterday. I said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a few more years older than my friends because they're not getting any older. I thank God for what he's done in my life. Be, make it personal, family. We're drinking from the salsa. Thank you, God. We have a problem. The problem is, is laid before the people. That she does. Know that whatever you have. It's enough for God to use for his glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. I'm here to tell you, Paul had a problem. Paul had, had a thorn in the side. He had a thorn in the flesh, and, and it was bothering him that he prayed, God, remove this thorn. And, and, and God, no, he just left it alone. He prayed again, God, remove this thorn. We don't know what it was, but it was bothering him. No, he didn't remove it. And the third time he prayed, God, remove this thorn. And God didn't remove it. And Paul said, God, what about this? And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. 
Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you God's grace is sufficient no matter what we're going through right now. Fix our eyes on the Lord. Allow God to deal with our problems, for there are some problems. The jar was her sole possession. The olive oil in that, that culture was precious. It was used for cooking. It was used for, for lights, for the lamps, amen. It, it was used uh, um, for so many different things. It was used you know, for brothers to, to take that, that ash off the elbows, you know, a little moisturizer. <laughs> it was used for a whole lot of things, and, and that's what she had, but she only had a little bit of it. So she couldn't do a whole lot with it. God will use what we have to start. He will use the ordinary to do extraordinary things. Her problem was that she had nothing, and she was about to lose what she had, her boys. So at first point, we have a problem. Second point, there is a solution. There's always a solution to our problems. It may not be the one that we want, but there's a solution. So Elijah brings a solution to her. And she had to either accept the mission or deny it. So, verses 3 to 4 of our scripture today, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. Elijah said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars. And as each is filled, put it to one side. Thank you, God, for that word. Elijah made this woman commit in faith to God's provisions. He let her know that there was nothing that she had. He wasn't giving her anything. He said, take what you got right now and put it in God's hands. Let's see what happens there. Amen. So he took her soul possession and told her what to do with it. Commit to God. He made her trust God and made her demonstrate her faith, and that's what she did. We find in Hebrews chapter 1, it says, Now faith is a confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. She had to be there and say, I, I really don't see it. Maybe she didn't see it. She couldn't have saw it. No one would have sat there and said, He's going to send me in the house with a bunch of empty jars and my little bit of oil, and he's going to send me out with all these jars full. She couldn't have saw that. So it took faith for her to go into the house and close the doors. It took faith to go out and ask neighbors who might not have liked her for jars. It took faith for her to shut the door and then do what? And could you imagine? Okay, now go in. Maybe she got 10 jars. Maybe she got 100 jars. Maybe she got 50. I don't know how many jars. She got a lot of jars. And then they, she went in there with this little bit of oil. Can you see her now? He said, okay, now take your oil in there and begin to pour. And she had to say, okay, I was born, just wasn't yesterday. <laughs> but take this in, Michelle, and start pouring. And she said, well, that's going to take about 35 seconds. And that's what she did. She didn't question. She went in and she began to pour. It took faith to obey Elijah. It took faith to go and ask. It took faith to go inside. It took faith to go and close the door. It took faith to pour. I would have said, you not coming in with us? <laughs> Why am I going there with these guys? <laughs> but she, it took faith. The jars would be filled with the oil that God would provide, and she didn't even know about it. The widow's faith can be measured by the number of jars that she collected in response to the prophet's instructions. That's what it was. The Lord wants you and I in the solution to our problems. Amen. He wants you and I in the solution. And that's what God will do. He will use us in the solution. Re remember the, 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 the man who was blind and, and just over in John 9 and, and Jesus bent down and he spat on the ground and mixed some mud and, and he, in saliva and he put it on the man's eyes. He told the man, go and wash in the pool. And the man went and, and the man was, was healed. He could have, Jesus said, you can see. But he wanted the man to be involved in the solution. God wants you and I to be involved in the solution of, of, of blessing ourselves through God's strength and power. 
Elijah could have clapped his hands and he could have made jars appear in her house. But that's not typically how things work when God's involved. God could have snapped his fingers and provided enough oil right there in a big vat <laughs> to, to fill all the jars. But that's not what God did. Family, I believe that God wanted to show the, the widow that her act of faith was more important than the stuff. I think God wanted the neighbors to see that this woman had nothing, but she was gathering jars one after another. She went into the house, and they were empty, and she came out, and they were all full. God wanted them to see that, that there was a miracle that happened behind the closed doors. God didn't want everyone to see the miracle, but I'm sure they recognized when the woman came out with jar after jar of oil that there was a miracle that took place in the house, amen, and that God had to be involved in it, and that God should be glorified by it, not her. She didn't have a well in the house. There, there was no well dug in the house. There was nothing in the house but this little bit of oil and some jars. And she came out with jar after jar full of oil. They had to recognize that this was nothing but the Lord. There are some things that happen in your life that people have to look and say, that's nothing but the Lord. Nothing but the Lord. I know where some of our kids started out in school. And I see where they're finishing up. I'm saying, that's nothing but the Lord. That's nothing but a praying mama. That's nothing but a praying grandmother. That's nothing but a praying church that got them through. Amen. The oil of obedience. We are blessed because of the obedience. The Lord says, pray about everything. Do we pray about everything? He says, don't worry about nothing. Do we worry about everything? Pray about everything and see if God won't show up. And God won't show out. And God won't do what God says. God wants to show himself to these feet people. And that's why he had to go, go behind the closed doors. For God specializes in doing the impossible, we often say. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 20, we find these words. He replied, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you if you have faith. We must demonstrate our faith in the Lord and be obedient to the Lord, and then, then will the blessings continue to flow our way. Thank you, God. Why borrow empty vessels? <laughs> Why not borrow some full vessels? I like full vessels. I like full jars with that, 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 that seal around it. <laughs> when I go to the, to, the, to the grocery store and I buy stuff, and I, yeah, I want to make sure that, that that jar is tight. Amen? I want some of those, you know. They, I like the ones that, that when you take it off, take a little, those, little, um, uh, uh, got a little strip of tape on it. That's sealed. Take it off. And there's nothing you got to pull off. Amen? The harder the better. That means ain't nobody been in my stuff. Amen? <laughs> God could have gave her some of those things. You know, you get those things from the, the pharmacy, you know, that only kids can open, <laughs> those child for two cop, caps on top of them. I want some of those things. But he gave her empty jars so that he might be glorified by what would happen next. Because she would go deep in debt, she had borrowed jars full of stuff. God didn't want her in deeper debt. The fact of bringing empty vessels into her house implies that there was something in the house that God wanted to fill the jars with. And that's where the miracle happened. We find in Philippians chapter 4, 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Family, we walk by faith and not by sight. This woman had to have faith, for there was nothing she could have seen. Amen? That is what Elijah was asking of this widow to walk by faith. The solution to her problem required faith, and she did not question Elijah. And this shows just how great her faith was in God. She trusted God, and she trusted God's prophet. We thank God for that. She went and did what the prophet asked her to do, and she was blessed, and her blessing came in the form of oil. Don't put limits on God's blessings. And if Elijah told her to go get some jars and get a lot of them, and she went and got two jars, you know how many jars would have been filled? Two. 
it, selling the oil from two jars, maybe they got her 50 bucks. Maybe her debt was 500 bucks. She was still been short. But because she went and got all the jars she could find, because at the end of the day that all those jars were full, and now all those jars be, be sold, all the money that was gained was enough money for her and her children to live on, to take care of their, and that is not putting a limitation on the blessings that God wanted to, to, to bring to this lady. Amen. She allowed room for God to work in her situation. All things are possible if God is in the equation. If we limit God by limiting what we have and what we put in his hands, then there will be a limit placed on the Lord by our lack of faith. If we do not take God into account, then Elijah's instruction to her, they would seem, they would seem very scary and very crazy. But she did, so we thank God for that. So again, that second point that we've just shared, there is a solution. The third point, finally, acceptance takes faith. Mission impossible. <laughs> if you choose to accept, it takes faith. And she had faith. Verses 5 and 7 of our Prickfield Scripture today, we find these words. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. You and your sons may live on what is left. She didn't say you might get by to next week on what's left. She may live on what is left. I thank God for how God will give us more than we started with. Amen. She followed the instructions. I'm here to tell you, according to scientific laws, when you take a jar like this and you begin to pour, you can only take a jar like this and fill a jar of the same size. Amen. You can't take a jar full of oil this size and pour it into a one-gallon jar, a jug, and fill it. That's not going to happen. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ and God, they don't, they don't worry about scientific laws. They create the scientific laws. Amen. So, so, so we're not dealing with the scientific laws. Amen. Scientifically speaking, uh, what Elijah told her was impossible, but with God in it, it is always going to be possible. God multiplies beyond our dreams. James 4 and 2 said, you desire, but you do not have. You, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. You do not have because you do not ask God. This woman asked God. Thank you. We often have to take actions for our faith, and that's what she did. You have to put some your faith into action. Amen. Remember Moses and him and the Israelites, and they were their back was against the, the Red Sea, and here was coming the, the Egyptian army was coming after them. And, and Moses stood there and God said, You got a staff. He picked that staff up and parted the Red Sea. Sometimes you gotta take what you got in your hand and you gotta use it to do it, thus saith Lord. Re remember that the, the Israelite army, they were afraid of this one giant Philistine. They kept running from him, and then that little ruddy boy, the little shepherd boy, uh, what was his name? Was it Daniel? David, thank you. That was David. David came there, and David went and got five little stones <laughs> and got a little slingshot, and he knocked that giant's head off. Amen. It was the, st the stone and the sling in David's hand, but it was God that guided. Amen. So God will use what you got in your hands. Amen. Remember there that Jesus was teaching and, and preaching all day long and everyone was tired and there was like 5,000 people, 5,000 men including women and children. Remember that? And they were tired and, and the apostles sent them away to get something to eat and Jesus said, you give them something to eat. They said, we ain't got nothing. They found a boy who had a little, little two pieces of biscuit. Amen. He took the five barley loaves and two fishes and, and they fed 5,000. And scripture said they picked up more than they started with. So it's important. That ain't nothing but God. Amen. So there's a solution, and God, well, he, he's the answer to, those, to the solution, but it takes some faith. So he took the bread, he took the fish, and he broke it, and he blessed it, and he, and he gave it, and he fed 5,000 plus. We thank God for what God can and will do. We learn here that, that our blessings may be limited to our capacity to receive. God's provision is limited by nothing but our faith. So build your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow God to work it out in your life. It is when we place our faith in the hands of God that we see the power of God. God wants to demonstrate his power through you and through me. But we have to be faithful to the Lord. 
and demonstrate our faith in him. God's provision, they know no limits. In the widow's case, there was no limit. Only limit was in the number of jars that she could collect. And God met her needs based on her faith. If she had nothing, I'm here to tell you, God could have blessed her anyhow. But he used what she already had to bless her. This was probably the best oil they ever saw. Remember over in John chapter 2, I believe, where Jesus turned the water into wine? And he said it was the best wine. He probably did that with her too. He probably said, well, well, olive oil is like $2, $2 a jar, but because this is the best oil we ever taste, this is a $5 oil. Amen? So we don't know, but God blessed her. The limit was only on the amount that she could actually save in the jar she had collect, collected. I'm here to tell you that the little oil became her instrument of deliverance because of God. It only stopped flowing because there was no more place for it to go. We thank God. Family, God will do his miracles in secret. Everyone ain't got to see it, so he likes to go behind the door, close the door, and then it began to flow. Matthew 6 and 6, excuse me, let me go back to Psalm 24 and 1. Psalm 24 says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who will live in it. Everything that she had, everything that she lost, everything that she gained, it came from the Lord. Amen. It was just a little oil, but we thank God for it. Matthew 6, 6, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. The widow was rewarded, but God blessed her in secret. Amen. Thus the widow was not delivered from her problem, but she was more than delivered. She literally got an, an oil treasury. Amen. It's an oil treasure that was beyond anything she could have ever thought about. Amen. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. There's some work within you and within me. Amen. And God can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine or even think of. There's no limit to God's love. There's no limit to God's power to bless you and to bless me. God gives us the overflow. We are literally drinking from the saucer. It is sweet. It's the right flavor. It's the right temperature. I'm here to tell you, we're living in the overflow because we're obedient to the Lord our God. Amen. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be obedient to who you are, God. We've got to stop putting limits on the Lord. We've got to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. It's written in the pages of the Bible that we might be obedient. Yes, yes. And in our obedience, we will be blessed. It might not be oil, but it will be blessings that come from the Lord. Amen. We put the limits there. Don't put limits on God. I'll end with a story. There was the, these two men, very good friends. They were fishers, and they liked to go out fishing together. And one day they were out fishing, and they kept catching fish after fish. And one of the fish, he would catch fish. They were big, and they were little, and they were small. They were large. They were giant. He would catch these big fish. He'd put them in his cooler and put them aside, and his friend would catch fish. Every fish the friend caught, he would measure it. And he'd throw big ones back and put little ones in the cooler. And after a while, his buddy said, what's wrong with you today? He said, well, I'm keeping the size that, that I need. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, my wife has an eight-inch frying pan. Anything bigger than that, I got to throw back. God has a bigger frying pan than that family. All right, all right, so don't sir. throw your blessings back because yes, you don't think they yes. fit in the box that you have designed. Amen. Yes, God is greater than all that, and God will give you. He's saying, get a bigger frying pan. Get a bigger imagination. Get a bigger box. We put God in the box. Take God out of the box and allow God to reign supreme in your life. Amen. Don't be like, a, I think it was a Nahum. A Naaman, he, he was, he was a, a, one of those guys, and he had leprosy, and God told him through the prophet to go down and dip himself seven times in the Jordan. He, he didn't want to go down because it was beneath him. There's nothing beneath, beneath you. Don't block your blessings. Amen. Go out there and do what thus saith the Lord. Father, bless our people. Let's stop putting limits on our God. Let's remember that God is in control and that there's some, there's some blessings that you and I are, are missing because we're not being obedient to the word of God. If we take nothing away from the story of this woman, know that she was obedient. And the oil flowed because of her obedience. 
And if we're obedient family, even during this pandemic, when things just seem like all the wheels are falling off, know that God is still ready to bless you. Don't put limits on what God can do. Don't say what God can not do. Know that you and I are limited, but God is not limited. Amen. There's some folks who have lost their jobs, and for the last year they've been out of work, but they've not taken a class. You could have taken an online class. Don't limit what God can do. Make your resume look a little better. Don't fluff it up, but do something in there. While you're waiting, volunteer to do something. See if God won't bless you. Amen. Learn a skill. Amen. Do something to get yourself ready to go back into the workforce. Some folks have been sitting at home because they've been laid off and they've been liking it. Because <laughs> they've been getting some pandemic money. But while you're laid off and getting pandemic money, amen, get yourself ready to go back in the workforce. It won't last always. And God's saying, get yourself ready so when there's an opportunity, you can do something other than what you did a year ago. <laughs> Increase your skills that God might put you in a position to have a better job than the one you lost. Amen. I'm here to tell you, when you get a pink slip, take that pink slip and go to work. Get ready for the next job. Know that God's blessing is right around the corner. I pray it so in your life and my life. And people, God said, amen. So I say, praise the Lord, for he's worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the message. God, bless it and bless these, your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.